more questions? Today we're going to be looking at the bone and skeletal system material from topic three. For Phys 1, this is a past review uh, created for you. Hopefully it will be helpful. So what we're looking at on the screen in front of you is a study guide that I created. And in the upper right corner, it's the digital version of the Junkiera text. Chapter 8 is about bone. I highly recommend it. Uh, if nothing else, please scan through it. Looking at bolded terms, make sure you know what those are. And especially the pictures in the text are very, very helpful. And especially the uh, brief captions that go with the pictures will be extremely helpful. So I highly recommend that you use this text. It is a good one. In the lower right corner for reference, we have uh, Dr. Manley Buser's notes. Um, we'll use it a little bit to get started because there are some things that I do not have in my study guides that are super basic that I kind of just hope that you uh, know. Um, but we will mention them briefly to get started. Okay. So before we use my study guide here, the basics of the skeletal system, kind of common sense stuff. What are, what are the functions of the skeletal system? Well, obviously, it's going to provide a structure, uh, support for your body, right, uh, and protection for internal organs such as your skull and your uh, thoracic cage. It allows you to move. Okay, it allows you to stand up. It allows you to move. It transmits forces from uh, muscles. It creates levers, you know, etc. It gets you off the ground. Also, something you don't really think about too much because you can't see it or feel it, it's where blood cells are formed in the marrow of your bones. This is called hematopoiesis. Uh, learn this term and just know what it is forever because you will need to know this for other classes and boards and, you know, the future. Also, uh, you can pull minerals out of your bones, you know, so they store them, but you can also pull uh, notably calcium from your bones when needed. We'll talk about that uh hormone pathway a little bit later and then also your skeletal system you know the bones in your body uh, can be an indicator of who you are uh, male or female your age your nutritional and health status any diseases you had fractures other injuries etc um, how heavy you were okay because your bones will respond to stress uh, through something called Wolf's Law which will uh, make sure that we understand what that is because that will be a test question Wolf's Law is basically the fact, the, or the concept, the theory um, that bone responds to stress placed on it, okay, by remodeling, whether it's getting stronger due to more stress or getting weaker due to less or no stress. Wolf's Law, make sure you know it. So those are just basic things about bone that kind of make sense, but I wanted to talk about. So let's go up here to the study guide that I posted called Bone Classifications and Morphology Study Guide, posted on the portal and Brightspace. We're not going to complete the thing together, but I'm going to basically translate the, the colors and whatnot, make sure you understand how to go about doing it. And this will be something that you can just uh, write in some examples, talk your way through it, use it as a study guide to prepare you for your exam. So you see colors, okay, and the colors are there for a reason. The first page is what we're really going to focus on. The second page is just a picture. Uh, I would just kind of ignore it if you have the junk here at text because this picture is much better, okay? So looking at the first picture of bone classifications, you see green, okay? Green is associated with movement. Long bones, short bones, and sesamoid bones are all about movement and mobility, okay? Long bones create limbs and create levers uh, in the body. S examples would be humerus, tibia, okay? Uh, fibula, long bones pretty pretty straightforward okay your arms and your legs uh create make your long bones also your fingers okay so your phalanges um in your hands those those would be long bones as well short bones okay are are going to allow movement but in very tight spaces so they're kind of roughly cubical in shape but they're all really really oddly differently shaped depending on where they're at uh these would notably be like the carpals um in your wrist and uh, in, in your ankle, okay? All the little bones in your ankle, like your talus and whatnot. So you might wanna come up with examples from your wrist, right? Your carpal bones, like scaphoid, you know, lunate, triquetral, etc. Flat bones uh, are in red because this is where blood cells are formed, okay? This is where hematopoiesis takes place. 
There are also attachments for muscle, but really, okay, mu muscle attaches to any, any kind of bone. But flat bones will uh, attach muscle, form red blood cells, and also protect your internal organs. So great examples would be all the bones of your cranium, your skull, okay, um, and your ribs, okay, your sternum. Uh, those are all going to be flat bones. Irregular bones are left with no color because I didn't think of one that would make sense, and so there's just don't, there is no reason for white really. Okay, but irregular bones make complex joints, they're irregular in shape, and so this would be, uh, you know, a great example would be all the bones in your spine, your vertebrae, are irregular bones. Uh, another one would be your scapula. Your scapula is an irregular bone, but you could also call it a flat bone. Uh, some of these are going to have multiple classifications um, because the scapula has a flat portion, but also a very irregular portion with the processes. Um, on it, okay? Uh, the next one is going to be pneumatic bones in blue because I think of, uh, when I think of air, right, I think of blue, like the sky is blue. The air is not really blue, it's just an effect, but pneumatic is shown in blue to maybe sink that into your mind as uh, something to do with air. And so what pneumatic bones are, are bones with lots of air pockets in them that function to create a, a lighter bone, okay, so it's not so heavy. Uh, so these are going to be found in your skull because it would not be advantageous to have a big heavy skull, okay, because you'd need uh, more neck musculature to support the skull and that would waste energy, okay, so um, pneumatic bones make your skull lighter. They also create resonance chambers, you know, for speech, um, but basically they make your skull lighter. So any of the bones of the, you know, of your skull you could list here. Um, your sphenoid, you know, your uh, temporal bone, your ethmoid, okay, all the little ones. You can just list a few of those here. Know that it's the skull bones, okay? Be able to recognize that bones of the skull would be uh, pneumatic, except, okay, you might call the upper portion of the cranium um, like the uh, parietal bone, okay? You might call that a flat bone because that's really, it's not flat. Okay, it's curved, but it's protecting your brain. So kind of be careful with these, um, with these iffy types of things. But the the skull bones that are really just creating your, you know, your 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 brain case. Okay, those are going to be more like a flat bone, so your parietal bone, frontal, uh, and your occipital. But the pneumatic bones would certainly be all those little tiny dinky ones, uh, like the craniofacial bones, the sphenoid bone deep in the in the middle there, okay, and your uh, temporal bone certainly has lots of air pockets in it. Then down here we're back to a green function, okay, a movement function. These are sesamoid bones. These basically just increase the mechanical efficiency uh, of your body um, by kind of acting like a pulley for muscles to attach into and to cross joint spaces. Uh, they, they alter the angle of the attachments between muscle and bone. A great example is going to be your patella. There are a bunch of little sesamoid bones uh, and they can be kind of uh, variable, okay, of who has them and how many they have them, you know, at the base of your uh, proximal phalanges and, you know, at your thumb and all this stuff. But uh, for sure know the patella, for sure know that they increase mechanical efficiency by altering the angle of the muscle attachment onto bone. And I just think of a pulley, okay, because uh, that's kind of what they're doing. And then down here in yellow, uh, these are abnormal bones. Yellow as in like caution, as in abnormal, okay. This is kind of tricky, but if you understand uh, the language, you know, that that creates these words, it's, it's not too bad. Um, so there, there's accessory and heterotopic abnormal bones. Let's look at heterotopic first, okay? Heterotopic, all right? Hetero means the same, okay? As in, no, excuse me, hetero means other, okay? As opposed to homo means uh, the same. So hetero, other, topic, topic means place, okay? So heterotopic, other, place. And if you can't remember other, okay, think of like homosexual, heterosexual. Homosexual is attracted to the same sex, Heterosexual is attracted to the opposite sex, 
hetero, opposite or other, heterotopic other place bone. So this is bone found in soft tissue. So it's bone found in other places than it should be found. Bone and soft tissue is heterotopic, other place bone is bone and soft tissue, bone in other place. So bones and soft tissue are, this is gonna be things like a, you know, gallstone, a kidney stone, uh, and then also you can have bone forming in vessels, okay, um, with like sclerotic placking, you know, in your arteries causing, sometimes leading to heart attacks and things like that. So arterial, um, arterial sclerosis. And uh, you can also get bone forming in your muscles and tendons. Uh, so calcific tendinosis, okay. <clears throat> I think uh, a most common example that you should certainly know is gonna be a kidney stone and a gallstone. But any bone with soft tissue is going to be a heterotopic bone. And then the other type of abnormal bone is just accessory bone, okay. So it's just, it's just an extra bone on bone. Uh, so I think of an accessory like a necklace. A necklace goes around your neck. It's, it's where it's supposed to go. It, doesn't, it's not, you're not born with it, it's not necessarily supposed to be there, but it's kind of where it's supposed to go. It's an accessory to your outfit, okay? It's an accessory to your clothing. It's extra bone on bone. It's not normal, but it's at least in the right place. And there are all kinds of different bone spurs and um, uh, abnormal bony growths that can uh, form on your bones, okay? So like a heel spur um, or a... Uh, you know, any type of degenerative change in a joint, um, these would all be examples. Extra bone on bone, okay? So we're gonna stop right here and uh, we'll pick up with some of this specific anatomy in our next portion. Before we move on, uh, please take time to fill in, okay, different examples that we talked about. Uh, go through her notes over here in the lower right corner and just list some of these specific bones where they would go, jot them in uh, before we move on.